Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Smart Thunder. In this video I'm going to be teaching you how to make an intercept mission yeah, and in this scenario I'm going to be doing it in Winter Stalingrad map. Let's begin. To create our mission we need to set up some basic ground things that we need to get into the game. To start that we need to go up here to these three and this dot, these three shapes as a sphere, a cylinder and a cube and we need to go to the sphere one because it's easy and what we do is we click and drag until you get a sphere about the width of the runway from end to end, uh, not end to end, from its area uh, lengthways, not lengthways, widthways, that's the one and we create that one and now what we want to do is press P which brings us the object properties. We rename this and we call it runway start. Just to explain to people how to move around in the uh, CDK mission editor, uh, this is your select button, this is your move button, this allows you to move objects uh, such as this uh, sphere I just created, the area sphere. To move the uh, view you need to press space whilst the yellow box is selected uh, use your mouse to move the camera, use W, A, S and D to move around on the map, uh, Q, C to move, hang on let me just check, yeah Q, C to move up, E, no, Q, E to move up, Z, C to move down, one of those two, it's for ease of uh, where you put your fingers. So, we've now created our runway start. What we want to do is make a second copy of our runway start and we will rename it once we've created the copy and in order to create a second copy what we need to do is press shift and drag our runway to the other end. It will ask me to rename the runway and we will call it, uh, we will not do that, end runway end. Now what we need to do is go to this page here, our triggers. To explain a trigger, a trigger is a logic for the War Thunder CDK, uh, the mission editor especially, and it basically goes for a variety of things before it performs several actions that you've asked it to do. So we'll call this uh, trigger start. This trigger will be um, will start at the beginning of our game. We want the time, which is our events, we want this time for this to start to be 0.1 of a second. So it will start almost instantly when we en enter the game. We don't need any conditions. And our actions will be add an airfield. Adding an airfield will allow us to select a runway start and a runway end. Our runway width will be set to 80. And the army of our runway will be our, uh, army number one. The friendly allied army for the player will be army number one. It's just easy because it comes out as green, but you can do army number two, but that's your choice. What we now need to do is create a smaller sphere at the beginning of the runway, here, and this will be where our player spawns. We will rename this one MIG Spawn. Okay. And now what we want to do is go over to our trigger and our add airfield. We'll scroll down and find spawn point. Add our spawn point being MIG spawn. Cool. Then what we want to do is add a unit. And we want to add our MIG. Our MIG will be our series 33 I think it's called. We just click off our unit spawn which is this little tank thing here. Our properties of our unit we will call it MIG. Three. Uh, we will change the class of the MiG-3 to our MiG-333 uh, or 34 even and we will change the army to number one. Now there used to be a time where you could use um, you could use this mission editor to play any aircraft but the aircraft that you play now has to be in your hangar in order to play it. We're not going to make a wing of aircraft, we'll do that in another video. We don't need to worry about, uh, consequently we don't, we don't need to worry about fire at will or attack type or anything like that. 
don't need to worry about any of this and we just need to go up and save that so now what we need to do is add another action which will be unit spawn will it be unit spawn? Um, Figured out what I'm talking about now. Uh, it's not unit spawn, it's something else. I just had to check it to make sure I'm doing the right thing. But it's spawn on airfield. So we'll just type that in because it's easier. Spawn on airfield. Okay. Our runway name will be the start of our runway because that's the way it rolls. The objects that we want to spawn on there will be the MiG-3. And now, this mission is a free play. Our MiG will spawn on the runway, this runway here, and be able to take off and do whatever the hell you want it to do. So in effect, we've just created our mission. But we're not done. So the next thing we need to do is add another sphere area. We'll make it pretty big, not that big. And we will, before we rename it, we will move it up to an altitude, let's say 300 meters, because all of this is metric, 300, and that's our X, Y, and Z coordinates, by the way. And we will call this uh, take off area. And we will zero that, because in our OCD. And what we will do now is make an action for our start trigger, another action, and we will use mission set as waypoint or mark as waypoint we will select the target area of the takeoff area and we will make this visible making it visible means the minute you go into game you will see this it will be your if you haven't seen a uh, waypoint it's a, a yellow circle with an arrow at the bottom and then an inner circle if it's primary if you untick this, you will lose the inner circle and it will just become an objective, which isn't very interesting and we're not fussed about it. So we'll just leave all of our objective as primary, unless we want to specifically make it different. So now what will happen is we will spawn him, we will see the takeoff area and we will fly up to the altitude and fly through the takeoff area and it will, um, it will count as a mission. Okay, so now we want to make another sphere for this. And this will be over here, because our battleground area to defend will be just outside this big village, or town. And we will add our sphere here, and we will uh, increase its altitude by grabbing it, pulling it up the y-axis and we will set it to a thousand which I think is reasonable bearing in mind the MiG-3 is a medium altitude fighter this one ought to be good okay now what we need to do is add yet another trigger and we will call this trigger player taken off the conditions for this is that the player enters our area. Players went in area. The target will be the takeoff area. Basically what we're saying is once the player has entered the takeoff area, we'll just call this waypoint one, sorry, zero one. Once the player has entered the takeoff area, the action, or actions plural, will be we hide that waypoint we just flew through, which will be unit markers waypoint, select the takeoff waypoint, and uh, de uh, take off a tick on way, uh, waypoint visibility. We will also make our waypoint, waypoint 01, visible doing the same way and selecting waypoint 1. We need to go back to our start trigger, add another action, which will be mission markers waypoint, target waypoint 1, and we need to hide it because we don't want to see it just yet when we instantly come in. Alternatively, you, you can leave it on, but I would choose to see the waypoints one at a time, less confusion I think. 
So basically now we've set up waypoints. That's a, a little guide on how to do waypoints, but we're only about halfway through designing our mission. What we're going to do now is we're going to leave it there and we're just going to go into our game and show you what it's like now for this first section of the video. In the next episode I'm going to show you how to make your bombers, I'm going to show you how to set up uh, ground troops to attack, uh, for the bombers to attack, and I'm going to sh uh, show you how to set up a trigger to count how many ground troops are left and how many bombers are left. But for now we're going to go back into our game and see if this works. So right now I've entered the game, I'm on the main page, I go to my user missions, I go to MiG-3 intercept and I press start. I set the mode to realistic and the limited fuel and ammunition but we don't really need to worry about that just yet because we're not shooting at anything. Now if this was worked remember we should spawn on the runway we should see one waypoint in front of us. Uh, don't worry about fuel because I don't know how to change that. <laughs> um, I'm trying my best to find that out but at the moment I haven't found out any information on how to change the fuel amount because it either will set to maximum or it won't set to anything. So success, we've spawned in, we're on the runway, we're taking off now. And just a couple of things, this doesn't always have to be on this runway, it could be on just a field, like, uh, like uh, the Battle of Britain campaign does. But it's normally good to set up in the on a runway which is already there. So this is our waypoint. You can see it's primary because of the bigger circle and then the little circle on the inside. We've climbed to reach that uh, waypoint. We're passing through it now. <clears throat> and now we've changed direction. We're going to a different waypoint. Now I know the FPS is going to be dire because we're over trees. Ignore that. It's just my computer slash potato. And now we'll climb to altitude. And this is, uh, this is where I leave you, you guys for this video. Assuming that this... Uh, waypoint will work. Ignore the radio chat, I can turn that off as well, I'll show you how to turn that off in the next video. But until then, thank you very much for watching this tutorial, I hope it's been very helpful. If it hasn't been helpful in a way, please do let me know. If you have any problems, do comment in the YouTube page, in the War Thunder Live or War Thunder Forum section. If you found it helpful, please give the video, wherever the hell it is, a like, because I really appreciate it and it also shows me that people enjoy the video. Um, if there's any other questions, any anything you have to say to me, then please do put it on the pages. And I will see you in the next episode where we'll be following up by adding the bombers, adding some targets, and uh, getting the mission going. So we're just going to climb through here to the end and just make sure it's working. It should disappear. If we got it right. No, it won't disappear because I haven't asked it to disappear. Ignore me. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next episode. Goodbye.